that preoccupies us very much every day. And we have an agreement with the security cabinet and the Secretary of Defense and Secretary of Marines uh, Security and Secretary of Government and we received the report regarding what happened within the as in the case of today, in the states, not just in national. From 6 to 7 in the morning, every day, from Monday to Friday. And we celebrate these uh, meetings of work in general, in the city of Mexico, but also in the states. And so now it corresponds to Durango, and we are going to inform regarding this matter that has that is of so much interest to the state of Mexico or the people of Mexico, and especially to the people of Durango. Additionally, today is the day of uh, indigenous people of Afro-American area. And we are very happy to count on the uh, presence of uh, the uh, original uh, people of all the cultures of Mexico in order to have a presentation um, from Alonso Regino, who's a coordinator of, of the Institute, or National Institute of uh, Indigenous and African American People in the U, uh, Mexican government. So the agenda today uh, contemplates a participation of the citizen governor of Durango that is accompanying us today and that as of yesterday something uh, he was here with us yesterday and so we've been visiting Durango since yesterday and Dr. Zerodoso Aizgur from Governor of Durango whom we appreciate very much due to his collaboration and we're working in a uh, matter conjunct, conjunctly with the federal government. And he's going to be taking the mic. And then the general uh, Luis Crescencio Sandoval will inform you. And Adelpo. Due to the commemoration of this anniversary this date that is for the uh, African-American uh, people. It's not just one day. We all, due to conviction, have decided to attend to all, to listen to all, to respect all, but to give preference to those that are humble. Give preference to the indigenous communities of Mexico. And we sustain this criterion and doctrine and for the good of all that first we need to take care of our poor. So now we're going to initiate by giving the govern, uh, mic to the governor of uh, Durango. So very good day, Mr. President of the Republic, Ms. Uh, Obrador, and the whole cabinet of security. I am welcoming you cordially to Durango and to let you know that we are very happy that today in Durango we are making having this reunion 
to realize the security of our country, but particularly to realize the security in the state of Durango, which is something that we appreciate all the backing that we have from Durango, from the institutions of the government of Mexico, and starting with the backing of our Mexican army now that is from the National Guard. And of course, also the federal police of the uh, fiscal uh, general, I'm sorry, the attorney general of the uh, government that together with the states and the government principal have been working together in a coordinated manner. And the coordination is what will take us to give better results. And to tell you, Mr. President, that in Durango, we are ready to be working, to continue to work with that coordination, because only in that way are we going to give better accountability, especially in this matter of security, because we need to involve citizens very much, because when you listen to the people, that's when you can better things that have not been giving uh, good results. And we have very important goals, uh, undoubtedly, but we can't also forget that with one crime, that's a matter of more than sufficient so that the institutions of the government do the part that is on, that belongs to us. So I appreciate your presence, Mr. President, in the Durango, to analyze not only the matters of security, but many other matters that we've been dealing with and will continue to deal with, to, to listen to the demands of the people and to continue to listen to them and apply, uh, like from the uh, central north area, to planting life in which is already operating in Durango. And the, and the credit uh, for, for uh, cattle, which has also been initiated, besides the well-being program that you are now taking uh, with grants for the youth, preparation school, superior education, and to offering uh, support for the elder and the in, uh, disabled people, and also the program for youth that are building the future. So we are going to continue to work together to give every day better results to the people from Durango, because from Durango we're going to contribute so that your government, day by day, will give better results to all citizens. Thank you for your attention, and have an excellent day. Oh, so that <laughs> he's got crutches, so it's going to take him a minute. Okay, Mr. President. Okay, so it looks like they're going to have a slideshow. So we're going to go ahead and uh, switch, transition to a different uh, screen. Because here's the statistics uh, from the uh, public security. And as you can observe, that in all uh, crimes, there is a diminishment. And yes, you can see there's a presence of the state, uh, national uh, state. Uh, so the kidnappings are uh, have zero now. And here you can see number place number 21 that has to do with all the crimes is 98.85. So it's below the median, so it's in the 21st place now. So you can see where the place of it, that Durango, from with our, our whole country. So it's gone, it's very low compared to the rest of the country. So that's uh, where it comes to, uh, uh, in relation to crimes. So, so the, the forces that we have in the, uh, here you can see um, from the Secretary of Defense that we have personnel 
uh, that are dispersed in different areas with different activities and they're colored so you can see what is where. So the uh, National Guard, the way it's dispersed throughout the country. The federal police also has a presence in six uh, municipalities of the state and the attorney uh, state uh, um, in the regional areas where they have uh, divided the state. So, um, so a total of that are, that are in security are 7,054 uh, units that are attending to, to the, uh, they're the whole force that are, uh, com are components of this, or the personnel for this, um, uh, which makes it be in uh, 21st uh, place of a national level, uh, level from the whole country. I so this is, um, he speaks in an indigenous language, which I do not translate, I'm sorry. I wish they were translating. <laughs> So he's speaking to his people regarding the meeting today that they're having, um, that they're being honored um, in the city, in the state of Durango, and that, um, that, that all their indigenous people are, are being honored, and particularly the Afro-Americans uh, are being honored today, which is, uh, you know, there's a a great, uh, there's an area in Mexico that has a whole um, society of uh, black African Americans and they have a very interesting culture. Uh, so now he's going to speak Spanish. So hello brothers and sisters. In the first place I want to thank you for the distinguished uh, presence of each one of you and to thank the President of the Republic for being here this day and that we're all together in order to commemorate the International Day of the Indigenous People of the World. And on this occasion, Mr. President, we are accompanied by an important commission of rep uh, representatives of the 80 uh, indigenous areas and the African American community of our country that as of today, or since previously we've, we've uh, celebrated the uh, African American and indigenous people. Just as you commented, we, we have made a, a great uh, amplified dialogue and consulting of our indigenous people and the African American people within the Secretary of Government and the Insti National Institute of the Indigenous People. And we want to inform today that during the months of June and July, we have developed 54 uh, consulting uh, um, groups where we have listened to the 68 indigenous people and the African American people in 27 entities that are federative. So in this process of consulting, they've participated around 2,700 uh, authorities and representatives of the, pe of the uh, indigenous people with the purpose of reflecting over the ideas and the proposals and the planning as to how we are going to make this judicial and political transformation in our country. This uh, fundamental uh, demand that our people have that they be uh, recognized in the Constitution and in the laws, in the rights of our people and our communities. With this idea and this proposal that the President has uh, planned, or, uh, that we have 
that we will have an attention preferentially to our people in our communities. In this process of dialogue and consulting, we have listened to the people of our communities and our people. And some of the most uh, relevant topics that have come is the recognition of our people and communities as a public right and to be recognized of their free determination and autonomy and that this be exercised through all, especially in the community and municipal areas, as we're seeing it now with the indigenous municipalities and with our customs in Oaxaca and in Ochutla and other areas of our country. Additionally, the protect, special protection of our people, our territory, and natural resources of this great university that of these people have in the diverse areas of the country that we need to protect in a very special way. And also to help it stand out the patrimony of the culture and our uh, diversity of communities. And we all know that the country uh, um, is great because of the cultures, the languages, and the cultural uh, uh, riches that our uh, communities represent, and that it's considered of special importance that they uh, recognize the um, collective um, cultural um, diversity, in, included in a very important way that the govern since the president has mentioned uh, recognition, uh, health and traditional medicine, that is something that has been uh, with our uh, national, um, that has been uh, with the uh, federal uh, government and our nation, and that, and that also that they have helped a lot with our richness of our country. So these are some of the matters or topics that we've reflected in our consulting matters. Complying with your attentive um, way that you listen to us with lots of respect and humility to our communities. And as in the day of the International Day, uh, to give you uh, the conclusions and um, requests from the people of the indigenous people. So these three, Ochuk, Santillan, and, uh, in Durango, and Patricia Guadalupe Ramirez. So they're giving him a list of the things that they feel they need for, for them themselves that have been neglected all this time. So they've kind of come up with a flyer to give to the president um, a list of uh, what their needs are uh, and so that they can know what to address, what the, the problems that are concerning the indigenous people of Mexico. So it looks like they had a photo moment. <laughs> it's very nice. So they're also giving them the the uh, baton, which means in their in their culture it means that he has to protect their country and their people and their cultures and the environment. So he's going to let him talk about their culture uh, to the people of their language. So we're not going to understand. <laughs> So he's one of the uh, elders and the, uh, like their um, like medicine man kind of, you know, they, 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 uh, so he's some uh, countrymen, uh, male and female, and hello to everybody. And I'm bringing a, a hello, a welcome from the people, the indigenous people from the state of Chiapas. And you can receive this uh, hello and thank you very much, or this salutation. Oh, 
okay. And it looks like they're bilingual, which is good. <laughs> so first they talk to their people, and then they, I guess they'll say it in Spanish if they know Spanish. So obviously they're mentioning the president. Hello, everybody, to all the authorities and our brothers that are accompanying us today. And especially, I am happy that, that our president is here and a licenciado, which is licensed, which is kind of like attorney, which I don't understand. Uh, he's not actually attorney of the original people of uh, Durango and from the uh, area of Mezquital and Pueblo Nueve, Nuevo. And uh, they're cordially inviting you to our uh, uh, state and that we hope that you'll visit us in our municipality. This is very important. So we're going to and with the presentation, and now we're going to open up the question and answer section. A, a um, um, newsman from Durango and one national one. So he's going to try and get some of the locals and then some of the internationals uh, to get a chance to ask questions. Hello. I want to ask you regarding Durang, uh, Durango, something that um, the area of construction and, and fields and health where they felt that they felt like the Chiapas of the north. So what projects are we having for Durango? Because our economy is dropped a lot. Yes, we're here visiting in Durango since yesterday, and it's the fourth occasion that I am in Durango in eight months. And I've come four times, and I'm going to continue to visit Durango and the whole country. We are working in a uh, coordinated way with the governor of Durango and we're applying uh, programs of well-being for all the inhabitants of this state. And because, as I said before, I have been uh, giving preference to the humble people, to the poor people, impoverished. It is very satisfactory to be able to say that the 39 municipalities that I know all personally, that I have visited more than once, are being attended to, all 39 municipalities. This can be demonstrated. And uh, older adults of Durango are now receiving their benefits the majority of them. We are at about 90% of all the ad uh, older adults are elderly. They are not receiving like before 1,600 uh, pesos, but now it's 2,550 pesos, which is very important. It's a big help. In the case if it were two adults now, their income is considerable for the adults and for the families. Also, it's important to say that it's a program that is universal, whereas before they didn't support the pension from East Bay or the securities or other uh, people that were retired. Now, everyone will be getting the adult um, people from Durango. 
And in the case of the indigenous communities, it's not after the 68. It's as of 65 years of age. Because you can't treat them the same with, because they're not equal. The justice would, is to give more to, to give to the one that has a less and the one that needs it the most. The same to, say, to be said is that it's almost like um, it's almost done the uh, turnover of pension to uh, uh, boys and girls impoverished with, that are disabled, all of them. All the boys and girls that are that are poor, uh, in uh, disabled in uh, Mexico, are now receiving a pension, the same, twenty five hundred and fifty pesos, by menstrual. They are now giving grants for basic level of preschool, primary, secondary. I can also say that's universal, that all students of Durango, of uh, middle to superior levels, like that go to bachelorette, uh, bachelor uh, uh, colleges, are now receiving their grants, 1,600 pesos uh, by menstrual. And they are also receiving grants students from level of mi middle to superior of, I'm sorry, level of university level of families with uh, uh, low uh, uh, income families and preparatory is for everyone and when it comes to university level it's for the uh, lower uh, or the poor people 2,400 monthly so that they can finish their careers. And here in Durango, we are applying the program Youth uh, Creating the Future. And there are already thousands of youth in Durango that are work, working as apprentices. They are earning 3,600 monthly, they're becoming capacitated for work because the purpose is that all the youth be attended to. They, they get guaranteed the right of uh, study and work. And yesterday we were in Guadalupe. It's one of the areas that most produces beans. Since it initiated uh, with this government, we, we started uh, guaranteeing prices for uh, basic uh, cultivations or cultivators. So they have a price guarantee for the, for the uh, uh, corn, rice, beans, uh, milk. What is the price, a uh, warranted price for? 14,500 per ton. What did they used to pay before? 6,000, 8,000, uh, maybe at the most 10,000. Now, 14,500 pesos per ton. Yesterday, uh, we recognized that they are giving money directly to the producers so that they can plant. And since there's a lack of information, yesterday I committed myself that they are going to be having public servants and Secretary of Agriculture, Guadalupe Victoria, to inform regarding these supports. Additionally, here in Durango, due to the petition of the governor, it was not contemplated to have the uh, plan Sembrando Vida, which was applied basically in the southeast of the country. But now, 
we've initiated in Durango the same program, which is very important. It's the only state of a northern central area that with which they are applying this program because it consists of reforestation and planting pla uh, trees of, uh, for wood and pines and also fruit trees. Not only are you, they giving them the plants to the producers, but they are also giving or propo uh, giving them a uh, 5,000 monthly for, for the owners of the land, whether they be uh, uh, little proprietaries or owners or renters. But in the case of Durango, this program is going to be, or to mean, planting 50,000 hectares, which will be permitting to create and then to con and has already begun and is already in process 20,000 jobs permanent jobs in Durango additionally due to the petition of the governor because I hadn't contemplated this originally he initiated the uh, plan for credit for uh, P um, cattlemen to have uh, loans on their word, and they'll ha will have an investment um, of about 15 million pesos in order to better the roads of Durango, the rural roads. Additionally, we are make are going through the country through the hospitals because we are going to better the whole medical attention system of Durango, which has been, uh, we've been going by Guadalupe Victoria and Vicente Guerrero. Then we're going to Zacatecas with the same purpose. And we're going to be accompanying this um, route. The secretary of, or this meeting uh, director of us, uh, help uh, and instead of being in the offices we're out with the people attending in the towns from the bottom attending the people's requests and petition so in order that we're adv advancing and we're going to attend to problems that are grave from Durango like the the scarcity of water, contamination of water in the lake. These are commitments that we have assumed and that we are going to comply with. We have a program that's very important in order to uh, help Durango. And all these things are, I repeat, in coordination with the governor. Durango will re receive resources, financial from the federal, like never before. And without doubt, the most beneficial, the ones that are going to be benefited the most are the impoverished of Durango uh, on a national level. So he's asking a couple matters. The matter regarding uh, something about the roads, that there was a blockage that was very, uh, uh, the roads towards Mexico by the people, the field workers. In the conferences and meetings, you announced that you weren't uh, going to go backwards when it came to the resources directly to the people and the workers, and that these organizations would have to get accustomed. But instead, they're still blocking the roads and the transportation for, for the people from city to city and towards the center of the country to know if there's any um, uh, contact with those organizations to liberate the roads. Because like we said before, that, we, that not to do it by force, the roads, but the next thing is for the governor of National Guard 
if he could also give us something regarding the uh, support that's already been set up because we go state by state and so what's already um, been set up and is it already set up in the whole country in a national level and how many people are already being getting uh, this uh, that are capacitated by the National Guard so regarding the last question we have supported or said that last week or the following week we are going to present information regarding how we're uh, dispersing the National Guard in the territory and so if you don't mind we'll prepare the Secretary of Security is telling me and I'm transmitting that on Monday uh, we are presenting uh, the, to the governors of the país, of the cu country, and if on Tuesday we'll let you know the information regarding National Guards. And regarding uh, the things about yesterday, um, the fraternity and the right to manifestation, and always we will opt for dialogue not for force we are we are not repressors the president Juarez used to say nothing by force everything due to reason and rights so I underline all for reason correctness and yeah right these manifestations we need to separate them from what was expressed yesterday due to the commemoration of Atalicio of Emiliano Zapata. I guess his birth? That's Natalicio. Huh? Got to do with birth. Yesterday it's been 140 years from the uh, Emiliano Zapata. And that's why there was manifestation. And there was another manifestation also in effect that had to do with in conformity that exists due into the, the way that now we're uh, giving the money up to the workers. And we are not going to change that. Now that our strategy, we are going to continue to give more like before, never before, for the poor people, to the indigenous uh, communities, to the producers of the fields. We're going to prove that this year we've invested much more in the fields and, and in the well-being of the people. However, all of that support is going directly to the people to the producers. No more do they go through any organizations. We are not going to give support through any intermediaries because it doesn't get there or it doesn't get there complete as what was supposed to be given to them, to those that need it. That is why they're upset because last year, they gave more than 3,000 million pesos to these organizations. In the past three years, we gave around 10,000 million pesos to these organizations. And many of them, and many times, instead of giving the, the people their supports in their entirety, they would buy things for themselves <laughs> and they would and they would give the people a, a little bit of this and that but not really their whole funds and they would keep the, the major part of the money so no there is no reason for to 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 be protesting for this we are not going to permit guachicol not above, not below. 
in not in any of their manifestations. Corruption is ended or ending. So little by little, we will they will have to understand that all those supports for the people are going to be given in a direct way, directly to the beneficiaries. We are not going to give any steps backwards. I am not going to be an accomplice of these corrupt people. They elected me in order to put order and to end corruption, which is the cancer that was destroying Mexico. What about the people that are affected on the roads? I beg their understanding. And now that I'm offering that uh, my uh, them to request that it bothers them for us to uh, combat corruption, but they understand, they don't, I know it's not easy, but because like they helped us um, to almost come finish with the gas thievery, don't forget there was blockages three weeks where they the people would be in lines for the gas stations in order to get enough gas and the people tolerated and resisted because those that were uh, de dedicated to the solicit crime of stealing gas they would even sabotage they would uh, rupture the ducts in order to leave us without uh, combustibles and the people resisted and tolerated and supported us and now what is the result now last year they stole 60,000 million pesos and now we have a savings of 50 million that's what we project that we are going to be able to liberate for the well-being of the people. So yes, it is a bother for some. It's a transformation. It's not a simulation. It's not more of the same. And I even celebrate that they're not uh, that the business owners are not getting together like in the old days that were very difficult let's not forget that there have been three transformation in the history of our country independence from Durango um, it was Guadalupe Victoria was a pres first uh, president of Mexico after the independence the first federal republic was constituted and the first uh, president was from here in this land from Tamazula Durango and the second transformation also had a lot to do with Durango from here Francisco Sarco the best periodic uh, um, newspaper man in the history of Mexico that helped very much the uh, liberal cause and the third transformation was the revolution and yesterday we were recalling not only Francisco Villa but also the 21 generals from Cuencame so Durango has always been present in the transformations these Three transformations were made with the circumstances uh, were such that it had to be done in a violent way, but using arms. But this time, the fourth transformation, which is very important to take into account, that it's being done without violence, with manifestations of protest, but but we're gaining the change that is on the road to concordance. We should celebrate this. 
There's no loss of life for humans due to the transformation. It's a change that's uh, peaceful. And not because of that is it superficial. That is to say, it's a not a change just on the surface. It's not just on the surface. It's a deep, profound change. Imagine what it is to pull out by its roots this corrupt regimen. The revolution couldn't do it. They couldn't end corruption. So what we're doing now between all of us, what we're now doing, zero corruption, zero impunity. So there are some that believe that there is still more of the same, that we're going to do more of the same. Oh, that we're just going to change government. He says, no, it's a change of regimen. And if not, then what would be the point to be fighting so many years in order to do more of the same? To continue to cover up and permit that they steal the money that be, that's the budget of the people and that the money be left on top, that would be the same like when uh, they oppose themselves to austerity. How can you have people that is rich in the government and the people are poor? How can they have 700,000 monthly payment? How about these luxury um, airplanes for the high-functioning officials, like the presidential airplane? It was going to cost 7,000 million pesos, while the people can't, don't even have enough for the most indispensable items. So therefore, that ends. They created organizations for everything. They amplified this bureaucratic apparatus of offices to attend to the people in the avenue, avenues in the most luxurious areas with the most extravagant buildings in the city of Mexico these offices in in the uh, foreign countries, in the principal cities of the world, while in the communities there was not even the ba very basic thing. They don't like it. Of course they don't like it, but they're going to have to get accustomed because I am perseverant and I'm very stubborn and I will not give a single step backwards. Durango. Someone uh, from Durango. Um, newspaper people. Oh, yes, you. And then you. <laughs> you know uh, Durango very well. And you know about sec uh, little security um, and the matter of inter internet, you said uh, you took internet as one of the matters that was important. So the legislation that it re in has to do with tariffs and it um, uh, favors the great um, uh, companies uh, regarding technology. Um, but there's people that are giving, that are now um, uh, giving the service. So can you uh, look at models from uh, Europeans so that they can give small companies that they can grow in their advances in uh, technology? That internet has not gone to those vulnerable areas to give these, that they, they, they need to increase competition. How do you think about, or what do you think of this? It's a good uh, topic, but in the case of Durango, like in other states, but no, there is no communication by via internet. Only, only in the main heads of the state, but not even in all of them. You can't uh, speak of um, by phone, cell phone, 
en uh, Junela, Sotay, Topia, and other areas, municipalities that are out on the outskirts, Sandimas, Mesquital. So you can't use the phone there because there's no reception. But only like maybe the municipal heads. But if you get out of the municipal heads of the uh, country or town, <laughs> I'm sorry, not country, states, you would have to go up into the hills in order to get a signal. So up in the hills. <laughs> But this is going to be resolved. And we've analyzed it very much. First, we wanted to uh, make, like, uh, do this fiber optic from the Federal Commission of Electricity so that companies that participated, but uh, with the, by utilizing the lines, uh, you, these federal lines of electricity, it has more than 50,000 kilo, uh, kilometers of fiber optics, of ki uh, cables of fiber optics. And we, we want to give uh, free internet for schools, uh, uh, public schools, but, but then we uh, went forward with the uh, the first um, basis, and there was not echo. So what happened was that the big companies that are in effect don't want to give service in the communities because it's not good business for them. They want to be just in the uh, in Gomez in the big cities of Durango, not in the rural areas. So, so this happened when the electric industry uh, became uh, owned by uh, foreign companies. They was um, uh, they had to uh, they. Uh, I industrialized the electric companies because otherwise they would not have, because it was not good business for the companies to go to the outskirts. So we decided now to create a company in order to communicate all the people of Mexico with tele mobile telephones and with internet. And now we've constituted the company uh, that will be an affiliate of the Federal Commission of Electricity, which is the company that has all the lines, all the red, uh, the web. And so they're going to be using that Federal Commission web to 96% at this time of the people of Mexico. So, so it will be a, a company that's already been constituted for that purpose that's part of the, that they're going to be working with the Federal Commission of Electricity. And so where the bill is for the, uh, for, ele uh, for the uh, bill with the uh, electric company is going to include the uh, internet and the phone companies, but it will be just the expense of operation. It's going to be just a small increase, but it's going to be, you know, it's going to be useful knowledge for the uh, state, but it's not going to uh, be like a business. It's just going to be to pay for the expense of setting it up. So the that's going to be an autonomy. So this company will be initiating its jobs and it will connect the whole country. The next step, once we've constituted that uh, uh, business with that concession, to give the service of the communities to the cities, from the periphery to the center, not from the center to the periphery, to the communities. So we're going to start 
um, we're going to start with the outside communities, peripheral communities. So once we've cons done that concession, now we're looking for to associate ourselves with companies that have technology and with companies that are local. Here in Durango, there is a company from Señor Limón that has made a great effort to 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 take communication to little con uh, towns. He already has a few kilometers, but uh, there's no incentives. But on the contrary, yesterday when we were talking with a person from here, from Durango, that was very enthusiastic, and he's demanding from a long time ago that they help him or give him support. He's telling us that now they put even more difficulties for them, obstacles. So we're going to take away all those obstacles, and we're going to facilitate it so that there can be an association between the state uh, company and, and the private and local companies of uh, telecommunication. That's the response. So next, we're going to Mexico. Okay. The next thing to ask you regarding these cases that happened yesterday in the morning in Uyarapa, Michoacán, they had 20 uh, people that were executed. Do you know what the report is regarding that situation? And what will your government do in the strategy to to eradicate the delinquency in Roma, which is one of the municipalities with the most number of ho uh, homicides. Yes, uh, we've been looking at this case since yesterday, and we've been attending. I, it's very lamentable that this presents, these acts present a violence. It's tremendous where there's a loss of human life and besides doing the way, also in the way that they do these crimes. We are going to continue to combat delinquency, but we are not going to fall in the trap to declare war like they did before in the previous times, which was what took us to this situation of insecurity and violence. We are going to continue to attend to the causes that originate the violence. We are going to continue combating poverty creating jobs, attending the youth, that there be well-being. Peace and tranquility are fruits of justice. And it may take us some time, but that is the best strategy. The other thing is, it's been demonstrated, has been the other, uh, you know, uh, thing they did was a failure. And that's where they started the uh, war, because they gave, the government uh, hit the beast nest blindly, and they caused the people a lot of suffering. suffering. And so now these acts are being presented. Yes, it is lamentable. And it constitutes a total defiance towards the authorities. But we are going to continue with the same strategy, and we are sure that we are going to have good results. Yesterday, even, um, I was informed by the Secretary of Marines that he had 14 persons that were from a uh, uh, group that they're not sure if they're uh, related to these acts, but they're acting on it. And it brought to my attention that, of course, 
that it's something uh, painful, that in this uh, group of people, of these 14, two of them are 16-year-olds. So, of course, we need to attend to the youth, get them away from delinquency, to don't let them get caught up. And due to that, that's why we're having these programs to help reel them in so that the youth will have options and alternatives so he can study, so he can work, so he can be happy with his family, that the youth not take that road of antisocial activities and conduct. Yes, we are working every day and dealing with these matters. What about this uh, security in uh, Europa and Michoacan? Yes, they have a treaty uh, special with Europa. The whole valley of Apatengan. <laughs> I was just there in Europa um, about 20 days ago, and I slept there in Europa. And I visited Apatengan and Buena Vista the whole uh, hill up until Colima and we we are attending to the problem and there in Michoacan we're in, uh, going to initiate the program for attention to the uh, youth to prevent addiction or attend to addiction. There's states where we have more problems than others in when it's dealing with matters of security. That is to say that there is more incidence of, uh, in some states of, ba of crime. And some areas are very complicated. They were giving them special attention and the vigilance. And I also wanted to be that before, remember that before there was no protection for the people because the federal police only counted with 10,000 people to attend to the demand of security for the whole country. And now that we've constituted the National Guard, we are having uh, more than 120 elements, but it's a process of recruiting and capacitating, training, but we're advancing. Here in Durango, where they had a lot of violence, here the truth is they have not been able to the the crime imagine that in the whole year here in Durango this is to say in other cases where you would um, expect to follow the example here in the whole year, they haven't had a single kidnapping. And yesterday, there was no homicides in Durango. And in this way, Nayarit is also, and Sinaloa also, has lowered the incidence of illicit crimes. We cannot say the same in the case of Jalisco and Michoacán and Guerrero, Guanajuato, Veracruz. But we do know very well what is happening. And we are not crossing our arms or folding our arms in front of us. We are acting. And I have confidence that very soon we are going to lower the incidence of 
crime. So yesterday, a judge accused um, Robles of deviating or um, diverting more than 5,000 million pesos. And you said that the attorney general is autonomous, but what if in the, the same um, uh, fisc, uh, attorney general had requested more information uh, where they also were involved in cor acts of corruption? I do not have a, uh, affirmation they, I have not been solicited uh, by the attorney, uh, attorney general any more information regarding any other uh, public servants. This was was solicited by uh, via uh, Office of uh, Financial Intelligence from the Secretary of Hacienda of Mr. Nieto, and I, they simply inform me and of the instruction that they have is that they go forth with anything that has, that has to do with authorities, uh, national authorities, uh, and a foreign regarding the handling of money or matters of money. But I do not have any information of any other uh, public servant. So the instruction is that you not cover anything. I don't want to be a president that's uh, covering for anybody. I don't want for a public servant to go and say to me, here's the solution, and then and he sits there and looks at me to see what I'm going to do. Imagine if I said, yeah, leave that little folder right there. Put it in the drawer. Then that public servant would say, all right, he's not going to respect me anymore. So therefore, if you have a file, proceed. What are you waiting for to proceed? I am not going to cover for anybody. And I am also clarifying that I am not for out for vengeance. That is not what my strength. It's not vengeance. It's justice. But not for lynching either from the, by the media. They have to present evidence. They have to take it to the competent authorities and let them resolve it. Not to be uh, judging people's summary judgment and accusing just to accuse. There is something that needs to be uh, guarded very much by everyone, and we need to guard it. Dignity of people. to be respectful of that. So that's my response that was pending from Durango. He who was pending from Durango. So they're going to give the, the... Wasn't it you? Yes, it was him. I have one single question, because we have a lot of questions. You, you have a titanic... Uh, job of um, destroying uh, corruption, which has become a custom. Like, what about education and all these things? So, so it's affecting interests, and there's um, interests. Have you detected within these uh, months of your government of certain groups or the black hand that is uh, causing the problem? No, no. I just said. No, they have not been able to get, get, <laughs> become to an agreement or uh, come to an agreement like with the one that was was formed by the independents. It was the realists in the movement of reform. 
the conservatives or reactionaries. And in the revolution, it was the the reelectionists were against Madero. So we don't have that anymore. They haven't been able to. Yes, of course they're 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 anxious and desperate. I'm recommending that they they take uh, they take some medicine, traditional medicine. Oh, which is that medicine that makes you sleepy? <laughs> that it makes you calm, it tranquilizes you. But I also have to recognize that they have behaved very well, these opposers, our adversaries, that they're not our enemies, because they've been opposers in, via the media, by the webs. The most they do is invent that that I eat sausages or chorizo or something like that of qual high quality but of course this is a lie anyway but that doesn't happen in the in the most part I've already told you that I don't like that food anyway all Mexican food is good extraordinary it's culture too you have to see that it has to do with the customs, with the traditions, and with the diversity of the food of Mexico. Because they eat in this country, it has to do with, well, with what's, what's coming from very far, or what's already been mixed with the food of the Spaniards, and in some cases with the food of the, of the Caribbean and with the food of other places, and lately with the food of the north from the other side of the border. So I respect very much the cultures of the people, their foods, they're extraordinary, they're succulent. But, but I'm from Tabasco, and I like butifarra. So one day we'll talk about that. But champaina. So these are things I don't recognize. These are plates of his land. And what I don't like is moronga. You know what moronga is? That the blood of the of the pork. I don't like it, and I don't like that blue moronga either. The ones they think they're uh, blue bloods. <laughs> Aristocracy of moronga of uh, blue bloods. Those I don't like those either. <laughs> but we're all Mexicans. Very well. Something about addressing this sector of the public um, regarding the metro bus that was uh, Armando More Navarro with uh, Morena was in the lake. They dip the they they didn't want to take that money that was already designated that it could not be removed and they would have to continue this with this government. And the other matter is regarding the aqueduct. There is a problem with the uh, aqueduct cancer regarding the same matter. And they're talking also about uh, guachicol and thievery in this matter. In the matter of Metrobus, I am reaffirming my posture or position that you cannot do works against the people. So by force, nothing. And so there is a uh, 
notorious refusal for that. However, what I do want to uh, talk about regarding works that are fundamental to help, that are um, requested by the government. The government is a promoter of the development. It's one of the best promoters that, that you have in your state. One of the best governors of the states. He insists in three things. And let's see if they don't coincide with the citizens. Number one, in the Puerto of Mazatlan, or the Port of Mazatlan, the communication and the amplification between Sinaloa. It sustains that it's fundamental to have this port in order to have development in Durango. The amplification of the Puerto de Mazatlán and the possibility of the construction of the a route of the railroad Durango Mazatlán. Yes, of course. Yes, that one they want. So we are talking regarding proposals for the development of Durango. You cannot fall in the demagogy that it's going to be done because we are saying that we're going to force it on you, this train. We analyze it according to the possibilities because because commitments are complied with. So we are analyzing the situation. Above all, uh, economical uh, matters of the country. That's one. Next, the demand permanent for the government for the, the construction of the lake. Dunaldos to help that there be not a shortage of water. And not only for irrigation, but also for for water to be in the city of Durango. And we're advancing that in that project to that proposal. And number three, the water in the lake. Over this last thing, I do want to commit myself. Yes, it will be done, this aqueduct, in order that there be water in the lake. This I commit to, because of all the demands, this one I consider is the most necessary, urgent. It has to do with health. And uh, now the aqu aqueducts are overexploded, or they've got too much going through it. And it's a reality. Overexploited, I think, is what he says. And it does have contamination. The water is contaminated with something, I don't know what he said. And we cannot resolve the problem with, with treatment plants. Imagine that. No, that cannot. We have to guarantee that the water that, that the people utilize for their food be a pure water without this contamination. You cannot have something more important than that. That is the most of highest priority than to be in the lake and be thinking that, that you're drinking treated water. That is to say, water that has contamination but is being treated by plants that are installed for that purpose? No. We are going to resolve that. We are going to 
encourage everyone to help us. And here I am taking the advantage that it not be, uh, that, that there be people that are interested in trying to block us by, by not letting us give water to the from the lake uh, from the uh, lake Sarco to the lake the new lake because that's to prevent that there be help that there be life I need the support of everyone the collaboration of everyone no more uh, not just for certain uh, uh, vicinities, but I'm clarifying that we are going to invest, it's about 60 kilometers of aqueducts in order to take water, clean, pure, to Torreón and Gomez Palacio and Lerdo from the lake. That is my commitment. We are going to make an effort so that there be a budget and that we start once the once the budget is ready to begin the work and before my government ends we will have resolved the problem with water in the lake oh yes that's a good one that's an important one you got to have water of course there shouldn't be right now what i want to do is resolve the problem and also there, it's a, it's enough of just analyzing the reality and what we need is uh, action and now it's politics is thinking and action and now it's conviction and not just to know the reality you got to transform the reality you can't just diagnose what the problem is but you got to cure the problem and that's what we need to do between all of us Yes, we've uh, been waiting for, oh, oh, he's got a little bit of food waiting on him. <laughs> so, so I think he's ready to go. So he says that, that he here, he's going to see which ones are better, Zacatecas or Durango. So thank you very much and goodbye. We'll see you Monday. Awesome. Wow. Man, that's something else, right?